So I'm out on a morning hike and um, I was doing some research this morning on real estate headlines and news and stuff. And Sorry, I just don't want to fall looking down. Um, and there's two schools of thought. So we're approaching the end of the year, which means that everybody's going to start coming out with their um, forecasts. And everyone's trying to ask what's going to happen in 2022. Oh, we're going to go up. We're going to go down. It's real estate going up, real estate going down. Our rates going up, our rates going to stay low. Um, so a couple things. Let's look at bearish. And we'll look at, uh, well, actually, we'll look at first bullish. So, obviously, most people right now, I think, are kind of the standing narrative is bullish. In the sense that the narrative is, A, there's a housing shortage. B, rates are supposed to stay low. C, buildings with the, with the supply chain shortage, building is going to be slower. So, that's going to continue that housing shortage. And then D, is gonna be the fact that millennials are just all, like the bulk of the millennials, I believe it was 1989 to 1995 or 93, um, all turning about that 30 years age, 30 years old, which means that people are gonna start buying houses. This is their prime house buying age, which is gonna also increase demand as time goes on. That's all saying that prices are gonna basically be the same, if not growing a little bit more. The highest projections are about 16, 17% with, you know, the average projections, which is usually what you find right now. Most people don't want to say it's going to go crazy. And then they don't want to say that it's going to go, uh, how you doing? Good. Through the roof or that it's gonna to stay too low. Sorry, someone in the trail. So, basic, most of the consensus is that it's gonna to continue to go up. We're not gonna see any major downturn because of the things that I said. And the foreclosure more moratorium, or not foreclosure, but the forbearance, is pretty much over. And as of right now, we're not seeing a huge uptick in foreclosures. So that's the bullish man's mindset. So if you agree with that, then it is smart to buy a house right now. And it's also not smart to sell your house because it might go up a little bit more. All right. Now, hi, my name is Bearish and I'm going to tell you why the market's going to crash. So one, the whole housing shortage and supply and demand is overstated. What I mean by that is supply is being, the shortage is being calculated mostly because of the time of, of val how, much, how much inventory is on the market. So there's only like two and a half months worth of inventory on the market, meaning that if no other houses come up on the market again, then it'll take two and a half months for the current demand to scoop up all of those houses. Now that's saying the house, housing, there's more buyers than there are sellers. So there's a housing shortage. Now, the argument to that is that people don't want to sell right now because they're not incentivized to sell just yet because the prices haven't reached the point that's going to make them want to sell. Once prices reach a point, which is, they're saying that it's pretty much now because the sentiment of buyers who think that it's a good time to buy is going down. Now, most people think it's a bad time to buy and that it's a good time to sell. So once sellers get off of, you know, realize that, okay, we've reached peak, that's when they're gonna start putting their stuff on the market. Now, once we reach peak, that's when buyers are saying, hey, I don't wanna buy at peak, what am I doing? No, I'm gonna wait. So then it flips pretty quickly as far as supply and demand is concerned, because sellers will say, hey, we peaked, let's sell. Is that the case? I don't know. Okay, so the next thing is, is that rates can't stay low forever, and yeah, they're gonna be low, but they're also going to continue to go up a little bit, which is going to slow down that increase in buyers. 
they're saying the forbearance moratorium is ending and we're gonna see a whole bunch of sellers that were on the sidelines that were getting free rents or free mortgages, not paying the mortgages. Those guys are gonna go up on the market and start to sell. So that's gonna increase more supply, which is then gonna further drive the prices down. Um, then the next thing too is that the feds have realized, this is the other argument, that now it could be true too. I do believe that there's truth to it. That the feds are gonna stop buying mortgage-backed securities and then eventually start selling. So what does that mean? So as of right now, the, more, the, the Federal Reserve is buying tons of the loans that are, that are being pushed out right now. So if you go, you get a loan, then what happens to the bank who gave you the loan, they're not gonna keep that loan on their books. They're not gonna say thanks every single month for the money. They wanna get their money back ASAP. So they sell it to Fannie and Freddie, who is backed by the government. And the government is buying all those loans. So that makes lenders really eager to lend money because they know that they have a buyer at the other end. Now, if they stop buying when the feds says, okay, we've had enough of this crazy mortgage and real estate market, let's taper it back. We stop buying those mortgage-backed securities and then banks say, ooh, we don't have a buyer anymore. Let's slow down lending, make it a little harder. So, and then once they start selling these mortgage-backed securities, well then now banks don't really have anybody to sell to because now they're competing against the government who's selling all these other mortgage-backed securities. So that's gonna further tighten up lending, which decreases the pool of buyers, right? So with that being said, we're looking at, we're at peak, we're almost at peak. The government's already said, hey, we're not gonna raise rates, but we're gonna stop, we're gonna slow down our purchasing. And then by the end of 2022, we're gonna start selling which then means we're gonna have a crash somewhere in 2022 or at the end of 2022. So question, which one is it? Is it both or is it bullish or is it bearish? Personally, I'm more of, it's gonna be kind of stagnant for a little while. Now, I'm very hesitant to always be bullish or to be bullish when these narratives happen because when you look at last year, the narrative was the same. The bearish were telling us the same things and the bullish were telling us the same things. Based on this last year's performance, I'm glad I bought because I'm up 100,000. Because the bullish was correct. Now, correct is only a matter of how much time goes by. So you could be correct this year, but incorrect next year and you lose all that money. So obviously you want to figure out, you know, what's happening. So what you think is most likely going to happen. Now, the biggest thing I've learned, first of all, from living through and being in the industry in 2005, six, seven, eight, crashes happen fast, that's for sure. But then the other thing too is when you look at 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, Everybody, we've been having these record jumps of appreciation. And everyone's every year saying we're going to crash again. And they always point back to 2008. So are we in the same spot? Fundamentals are different. They will be definitely different catalysts. But we are definitely in the asset bubble. Because there's a lot of money in the system. So... I personally think that A, you should never underestimate the feds because they can they can pour fire on this thing and we can still keep going up with cheap money. There's not a lot more room to grow, to be honest, but I could be wrong. No one knew that we were going to have in some areas 50% growth. So um, the other thing is you also got to look at your local area. Local areas are key. People want to move in. People want to move out. What's the supply in that specific area and then lastly we know for a fact that they're printing money and they're going to continue to print money for a long time 
or at least for in the near future. Which means that if you hold a hard asset, that asset should appreciate in the uh, in comparison to how much the money supply is being devalued. So in that sense, you automatically have a little bit of a better situation by holding the property while they're printing money than it is to sell the property and hold the cash. Does that make sense? So I think it's, uh, it's, I think the smartest thing to do right now, if you want to move, if you're willing to move, if you're looking or thinking about moving your own sidelines, depends on the market that you're in. If you're in a market where it's had huge growth and maybe the prices are about to come down because of uh, lack of job growth or things like that, and you have a lot of money, a lot of equity, maybe it's time to sell and you look at moving to another place that is cheaper where your money can go further then you kind of have the best of both worlds. If you can't do that, downsizing is a smart thing. What if you have a giant house that you don't need? And in that case, sell that house, downsize into some smaller in the same market, keep that cash, reinvest it elsewhere, don't spend it, not on a boat. And that might be a good idea too. Um, or you just, hey, believe there are, that the bullish are right, we're going to continue to go up a little bit. We'll have about 5 to 7% growth in the next year. And we evaluate 2022. Maybe we sell again. So those are my thoughts. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I hate predicting again. Going against the Fed is sometimes a costly, costly mistake, as most people have done if they sold and not rebought within, you know, the last five years. But can't keep going up forever so time in the market also is it says costly as well because if you get it wrong and it turns quick you can lose a lot too so think about it i know i probably didn't help you much because i'm just as confused but i'm curious what you think are you bearish or are you bullish which one which one do you believe in all right talk to you soon guys bye